Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. As ever, every watch you see here is for sale. We're waking up with watches and you can reach out directly to me at tmasso at thewatchbox.com for prices, sales, and trades. The names of all watches with references and prices are in the description below. So reach out directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com when you see what you like. All right, jumping into a King Kong chronograph. This was the 20th anniversary Audemars Piguet Royal Oak chronograph. Launched in 2017 at SIHH, this timepiece was a 500 piece limited edition in platinum 950 and grade five titanium. So this is the 26331 IP. Note that the bezel itself is all polished white platinum. Even the top, which is normally satinated, is black polished. And you can see it turns black at all but the one reflective angle. Now the bracelet itself, we'll get a little bit closer right here. It includes intermediate black polished links. Normally these are satin finished on their top, but platinum here, Noble, is always high gloss. Combining with the satination of the case and the individual links, it creates an exquisite contrast, and you get that same level of finish that you expect on any Royal Oak, which is to say immaculate and hand executed. The bracelet alone takes approximately 10 hours. The bevel of the case expands perfectly onto the shoulder of the individual links, and you'll note that though you can see the diminishing taper of the bracelet, I cannot feel the individual steps down. That is how tight are the tolerances. Now the dial is a nickel anthracite gray grand tapisserie. It is a pantograph cut artisanally crafted component that since 2012 is made in-house by Audemars Piguet on the vintage style 19th century pantograph mimicry engine that takes a big pattern and creates this little one. Now it is a lovely contrast of blue and that nickel anthracite with a blue track outboard for the chronograph seconds. The Change for 2017 was the addition of a asymmetrical dial with the large chronograph minutes and hours plus the smaller seconds at the bottom. Those are your constant seconds. Now you have the look of the old screw down crowns, but in fact you have chronograph pushers that do not require screwing in or out. You still have a screw down crown. The watch still retains its surface swimmability, 50 meters and surface swimmable. This is an all around sports watch. Throw it on the wrist, 41 millimeters, but it does wear larger as Royal Oaks are wont to do. 11.1 millimeters thick and shallow on the wrist. It'll slide underneath the cuff, but it is broad. So I recommend you think of it more as a 43 millimeter than as a 41. As much as I do love that particular edition of the Royal Oak Chronograph, the best watch in the Ultra Haute de Gamme class in terms of investment and features is the Generation 3 Vacheron Constantin Overseas. Now this watch launched back in 2016 at SIHH, third generation overseas, 42.5 millimeters in stainless steel, 13.9 millimeters thick. The timepiece features a lustrous, glossy and gleaming blue dial that reminds me of that on a certain blue chronometer, but truth be told, I have no idea where that dial comes from. From. It does look familiar though. Now the timepiece features a couple of firsts for the overseas. A first display case back and first manufacture movement, but also a first, a quick release system for the bracelet that allows you to pull tabs on the underside and remove the bracelet. The watch is thoughtfully included with two accessory straps, one rubber, one leather, so you can throw the watch on its accessory straps or swap back to the bracelet using only your thumbnail. Now the case back, again a first, a display case back so you can see the movement, and another first, a manufacturer caliber in the chronograph. The rotor features four types of finish, media blasted, satin, chiseled, and black polished, 22 karat gold, not 21, not 18, unidirectional winding with ceramic rotor bearings, and you can see a Geneva Hallmark case as well as movement. This watch has the works. 52 to 54 hour automatic winding power reserve, and a vertical clutch and column wheel actuation. If you look closely, you can even see a black polished Maltese cross at the center of the column wheel. The timepiece features 150 meter water resistance and a soft iron cage around the movement, so it is 25,000 ampere per meter anti-magnetic. Remember, a standard ISO anti-magnetic watch is 4,800 ampere per meter, so that is significant. Now, the bracelet might be the best available, as each side of the bracelet features an individual micro adjustment. You can see how I can make that 1.5 millimeter of adjustment and on both sides of the clasp using that incremental slider. I also have the ability to size each individual links as every link is held in place by a screw so I can find exactly the right size even though this is a metal band.
Okay, sentimental favorites. Back in 2017, Zenith launched the DeFi El Primero 21, and I wanted the watch nobody bought, the Panda Dial. For 2019, Zenith upgraded the seldom seen Panda Dial, full bracelet, and now a ceramic bezel. This watch is the works. The DeFi El Primero 21 features a 44 millimeter case in grade five titanium, matching grade five for the bracelet. And you can see that the dial is not just a panda, but an extravagant, vertically satin grained panda. The watch also features a manual wind power reserve for its chronograph function two separate movements inside one watch let me show you how you have both the El Primero which is 36,000 vibrations per hour and then you have a second escapement balance and power reserve for the 360,000 vibration per hour flying second or foudrayant now turn the watch over and you can more easily see how this works as you have an ultra high frequency separate balance and escapement down at the bottom of the picture and then you have the El Primero at 10 beats per second up above the El Primero features for the first time on an El Primero hacking seconds and, as on the other LPs, a full silicon escapement that needs no lubrication. It is an automatic winder, but that's for the El Primero only, the time. 50 hour power reserve and a certified chronometer, you need to manually wind the 50 minute power reserve for the chronograph itself. Now the watch is 100 meters water resistant, automatic and fully loomed, so you've got a full suite of functions. And note the dished chaptering outboard, as well as the applique indices, the dial has wonderful depth and a handsome vertical satin finish that perfectly matches the satin finish on the lug hoods. Throw this watch on the wrist and you've got something special. Though a 44, it wears smaller than that 41 millimeter Royal Oak because it's fairly narrow across the wrist and feather light and titanium. This is a timepiece that has it all. And if I were to buy just one Zenith in current production, it would be this bad boy right here. That said, we have an extraordinary example of the second most famous chronograph in the business. Now this is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Cosmograph Daytona 116515 Oyster Flex rubber strap bracelet and rose gold, red gold really, with a ceramic bezel and an explosive combination of metallic rose and black lacquer on its dial. 40 millimeters by 12.2 millimeters thick. This is a compact watch. It's 100 meters water resistant and on the Oyster Flex you're not going to worry about getting your strap wet. The timepiece also features an integration of lug and strap that leaves no daylight showing between strap and case band. The Oyster Flex is a bracelet, not a strap. There's a metal band in there. It's sheathed in rubber, so it can never tear or fracture. Now, if you take a quick look on the underside, you can also see that Rolex equips a bellows system so it'll cinch down to the wrist and also aerate well. In the case, three-day power reserve, chronometer certified, anti-magnetic caliber 4130. With a vertical clutch and a column wheel, this is best in the business pusher field it's up there with Zenith, Longa, and I would even go so far as to say the Breitling B01. But this is a sharp and crisp column wheel. And provided the watch is actually wound, and I do have a problem with that on this show, it jumps to attention with alacrity, but no stutter because of the vertical clutch. This is the 116515, one of the sharpest and most punchy looking Daytonas. A 40 millimeter watch that because of the bezel extending the dial, reads visually as a 42. From Rolex to Rolex, we talk about the 2019 reference 226659, the Yacht Master 42 in white gold. Three-day power reserve, 42 millimeter case, black lacquered maxi style dial, and you have this handsome bezel insert in ceramic. And you can see that it features both media blasted base and relieved and polished indices and numerals. Bi-directional, of course, this is a yachtsman's timer bezel, not diving equipment. You can see the case is still flush, flat, easy to wear on a smaller wrist. And what I love here is that it maintains the sweet sweet lines of the other Yacht Masters. It owes more to the lines of the Daytona than it does to the sheer and squared off cases of the GMT's Explore 2, Sea Dweller, and of course Submariner. Now you have the Oyster Flex strap bracelet here too. There's a titanium alloy band internally, but we have a big change with this particular version of the Yacht Master. Though we've had an Oyster Flex Yacht Master in the catalog since 2015, this is the first time we get the glide lock adjustment system, the incremental system with a huge range that you find on the Submariners and the Sea Dwellers, so you get more ability to adjust the mechanism, not just when you choose the size of your Oyster Flex, but in real time, dynamically, on the wrist as the watch is being worn. Let's jump back a little bit, see it on my wrist. Remember, this is a 100, this is a 100 meter water resistant watch with a three day, 
3235 Next Generation Rolex Power Plant. It's easy to wear and it's nice and flat. It's a gorgeous piece and I would even go so far as to say that the Cyclops Eye wears better and less obtrusive on the 42 millimeter watch than on the more crowded 40 millimeter dial. A real special piece. I mentioned that the Daytona is the second most famous chronograph in the business. This is numero uno, a timepiece that still flies with NASA and in fact is still authorized for extravehicular activity, also known as spacewalks. The Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch has changed very little since the 1960s. You still have the Moonwatch Caliber 1861 inside, 48 hour power reserve, manual line, 50 meters water resistant, lateral clutch, cam system, 21 six beat rate, and indestructible. It's actually more shock resistant than the X33 that followed it. The timepiece features all lacquered white hands, plenty of loom on the dial, and that classic off-axis distortion due to the Hessel thermoplastic crystal. Easier to scratch than sapphire, yes, but harder to shatter, and that resistance to fracturing is important in zero gravity. You have a full alligator leather strap here and a deploying clasp. Levels of refinement you normally don't expect on a moon watch. The timepiece is 48 millimeters lug to lug and 42 millimeters in stainless steel, so it wears well on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, and I'd recommend it as for wrists as small as 14 centimeters circumference. Remember, at 42, this watch was huge in the mid to late 60s, so oversized and legible is the style. It's even formal enough with its black and silver two-tone aesthetic that you could wear this as your dress watch every day. Ah, Rolex, you may make the world's most famous dive watch, but Blancpain, you made the world's first. Beating the Submariner to market by a few months in the early 1953 time frame, the Blancpain 50 Fathoms was the prototype of the modern dive watch and launched in 2007. This model 5015 is the closest living relative to that pioneer. 45 millimeters in immaculately hand-polished stainless steel. You can see some of the refinements here as Blancpain entirely black polishes the case band features the nameplate on the flank, and uses hex screws and bars to retain the sailcloth strap for maximum security. The rotating bezel, let's hear it against the mic. It's crisp, it's precise, it's 120 clicks. It lines up with the broadsword style minute hand, which has a lovely syringe style point. Now you have that zero to 60 minute timer, but because it's completely capped by a cambered sapphire, it has a lustrous, almost dew dropped aesthetic with a fully loomed bezel, fully loomed quarter arabics, and as you can see, a very broad and bright dial at night. This invites a loom shot once we're done talking about the movement in the case back. You have a soft iron anti-magnetic cage like a Milgauss, 300 meter water resistance, and the five day power reserve exclusive caliber 1315 automatic movement inside. Let's throw the watch on the wrist real quick and then I promised you guys a loom shot and I plan to deliver. Deployant clasp sailcloth strap coated with rubber on its underside so it feels silky like suede. The watch is actually short across the wrist as the lugs are stuck be tightly downturned and close cropped to the case. So I can recommend this watch for a 14 centimeter circumference wrist. You can see it'll even fit underneath most, most cuffs. So this is a timepiece that offers just about everything you could want, including being historically relevant and as a design enduring. Okay, loom shot coming. I'm still here. A circular supernova. Now you can see because the bezel is capped by a sapphire, it can be fully painted with loom with no risk of fracturing the paint. So this timepiece, incredibly easy to read night or day, has a special place in the pantheon of divers and it remains one of the best in the business in the year 2020. But if you want a more minimalist 50 Fathoms, then you want this, the Bathyscaphe Gray Ceramic. Launched at Baselworld in 2016, it's often mistaken for one of the ocean commitment watches, but it doesn't have the moralizing graphics on the dial side. 43 millimeters in gray ceramic, the watch has more of a vintage look even than the 5015, as this reference 5000 has a 50s inspired big crown profile, no guard case flank, and squared off minimally beveled lugs. It's 43 millimeters by 50 millimeters by 14 millimeters thick, and feather light in ceramic. The ceramic also giving you a remarkable scratch resistance. So if you can see the scratch magnet flank of the polished 
5015. This is the antidote. A timepiece that will look new 10, 20, even 30 years hence. It wears easily on the wrist with a navy blue sailcloth strap, much like what you just saw on the 5015. Now let's get a little bit closer. Attention to detail is strong at Blancpain. As you can see, the Le Brasseau company uses a ceramic buckle and a ceramic pin in matching gray ceramic to ensure that your desk diving does no damage to these critical and often overlooked minor components. Now the dial, of course, is a blue sunburst with an explosive character to it and dimple style, inverted dimple style individual indices with baton hands that have syringe ends. Let's hear the bezel against the mic. This one a little bit creamier and more subtle than the other watch. It's more Grand Seiko. I should mention that it features a blue ceramic insert rather than the sapphire cap of the 5015, but turn it all over and you can see where this watch carries an advantage over its brother in the model line. There is a silicon hairspring, so no need for the soft iron carriage for anti-magnetism. You can see the caliber 5015. Beautifully executed with three mainspring barrels, six position adjustment, one more than the high horology standard of five. It runs for five days and it can run as close to perfect is about plus one second a day. It is free sprung for shock resistance. It beats away at four hertz. Quick set, hacking seconds, 300 meter water resistance. Note the double finish on the white gold rotor, satin and media blasted with a fascinating spiral satin finish across the bridges rather than the somewhat rote and hackneyed Cote de Genève normally used. Also note the big broad mirrored bevels that we have here. As good as it gets, these are so broad you don't even need a loop to appreciate them. Black polished screwed with chamfered slots, you've got those screws artisanally crafted in a watch that is gorgeous from every facet and again thanks to the ceramic externally likely to stay that way indefinitely. Let's talk sports watches, let's talk independent horology. In 2016, F.P. Journe shocked everyone with a men's version of the Elegant Tonneau case. For 2019, this version followed up with a DLC light scratch-resistant, ultra-hard, titolite coating on grade 5 titanium. The Elegant 48 titolite is the sportiest Jorn watch you can buy. 7.6 millimeters thick, the timepiece features a lug-to-lug -lug dimension of 48 millimeters and a 39.5 millimeter span across the case from 9 to 3. Now, when you throw it on the wrist, the timepiece is comfortable, flat, flush, easily fits underneath the cuff, and it also features an element that you will not see on many men's watches, an ultra a luxury quartz caliber. So, eight to ten years in operation on the wrist. This is a timepiece with an 18 year standby mode, so it can actually retain operational charge for 18 years. Finished handsomely and rendered from rose gold, it has a rare, worthwhile display case back on a quartz watch. Now, the timepiece has a little eccentric weight on the dial side because after 30 minutes, it will shut down its stepper motors. A microprocessor continues to keep track of the time, but when that little eccentric weight moves, it wakes up the watch, and the hands will move clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever is nearest to the current time. That's how the watch achieves an 18-year shelf life. The entire dial is illuminated luminescent disc of Luminova, and here comes our second loom shot of the day. This is going to be the best one. I'm sorry, Blancpain, but Jorn takes it this time. Okay, that is just crazy, and as you can see, the actual painting on the dial, the numerals, the name, the indices, the scales, they're actually represented in relief against the fully loomed back, the luminescent disc underpinning them, giving this watch not just an incredible loom shot, but a wonderful three-dimensional facet that most watches do not have. I should also mention that this watch, tested to over 50 meters, is the most water-resistant and swimmable Jorn in the catalog. I'm bringing back the bathyscaphe for a split second because I realize I don't think I showed you this watch on the wrist. So here's how it looks. Uh, this is a timepiece mechanically identical to the 5015, but it feels different. It's lighter and it's more compact and flatter on the wrist. Now, while we're speaking of FP Journe, let's talk about the best of the best, the black label. Reserved for FP Journe Espace and Boutiques. These are timepieces that are not just boutique exclusives, but you must be a previous buyer of a new FP Journe. 
Launched in 2008, the Black Label series is extremely constrained in yearly production with two of each model. So this Black Label Tourbillon is a special piece. 40 millimeters in platinum. It has the Black Label combination of black dial and platinum case with the signature F.P. Journe Tourbillon Souverain Remontoir. So you have the Tourbillon Souverain with the Remontoir. Let me explain them both. The original F.P. Journe wristwatch built in the early 1990s was a Tourbillon with a Remontoir de Galate or Constant Force device. In 1999, it became the first F.P. Journe wristwatch made under his own name. So you have the tourbillon free sprung with an overcoil hairspring beating away circuit of one minute, but then you have this Romontoire de Galate constant force device which meets out one second bursts of energy so that the escapement for the first 32 hours of power reserve always receives the same energy and you always have the same amplitude. Now the Remontoire is a linear titanium spring on the reverse side. You can see there is a little lever and a linear titanium spring and every one second energy from the mainspring barrel transfers to the spring and then to the escapement. So you never have the barrel driving the escapement directly and that is how you avoid the loss of amplitude as the watch discharges. It also prevents the watch from running very fast when fully wound. Now like a marine chronometer, the power reserve moves backward and you can see how the remontoir also powers the deadbeat seconds. So the power reserve indicates zero, meaning it has been zero hours since I wound the watch. With a marine chronometer, you want to wind it every 24 hours at the exact same time each day for best timekeeping. So it's more important to know how many hours since it was last wound than how many hours until exhaustion. And that is why the most accurate of Journe watches feature this reverse system that shows you how many hours since winding. Red gold movement, you can see it is solid 18 karat gold. So you have an 18 karat gold movement and, as you can see, you have a platinum case. Also note, this is one of the various, very earliest of the black label series as this is an Eleanor case made in France and the last of these cases were made in about 2008 and the black label series was launched in 2008 so this is a unique combination of a black label that also features the French made Eleanor case thrown out on the wrist it is a very special piece of course it achieves the original Abraham Louis Breguet goal of precision via the tourbillon, but also the free-sprung architecture, the overcoil, and the remontoire de galate. It is a tourbillon that satisfies both the intellect and the aesthetic sense. Easy to wear on a smaller wrist, 40 millimeters, and only 48 lug to lug. Now, I love the Chronomet Bleu as much as the next guy, but they're everywhere. And with Jorn making about 900 watches a year and over 100 of them, being the Chronomet Bleu, it's a fairly numerous watch by the standard of the brand. This one is a series of 99 pieces. Launched in 2014 to celebrate the arrival of the 10th FP Journe Boutique, this one in Beirut, Lebanon, the Chronomet Bleu Biblos is a 99-piece special series made in honor of that boutique and named after the Phoenician city in the north of Lebanon, a timepiece that features a solar-inspired sunburst cutaway to its signature metallic blue lustrous dial. It features the same black-blue polished tantalum case and the off-white cream printing of the dial as well as varnishing of the hands. You can see the base plate of the movement in solid gold, freehand engraved on the dial side, with the name of the watch and the name of the brand, F.P. Journe Biblos. You can also see the movement hand-finished on both sides. Truth be told, a combination of mechanical and hand finish, which is the high horology standard, I'd compare it with Audemars Piguet finishing levels. Now, the movement is the caliber 1304, but as you can see, it's been customized. It says on the base plate, Chronomet Biblos. Now, the timepiece has twin barrels and a 56-hour manual wind power reserve, plus a hidden drivetrain. So you can see the barrels, you can see the escapement, but you cannot see the train driving them. It's hidden under the dial side, so you can see the multiple finishes. Linear Cote de Genève, satination on the wheels, black polished screws. You can see the mirrored anglage on the edge of each bridge, as well as the barley corn on the base plate and the engine turning perlage just below the balance, which beats away at 21.6, adjusted in six positions like a chronometer, but one more as the chronometer is generally just five. This is free sprung as well. Throw it on the wrist. It's a comfortable and compact 39 that sits easily underneath the cuff, handsome and absolutely glowing with color and character. This is an extravagant watch by the standard of the Journe brand, which your numerally isn't quite this expressive. This is F.P. Journe cracking a smile. 
Let's take a look at the accessories real quick. You can see there's a lovely custom strap fitted only to this model. This is the only watch equipped with this particular quality and color of leather. And then you see Jorn going all the way with a matching tantalum pin buckle. When we speak of Blancpain, we usually speak of dive watches, but the best values from the brand pre-owned are their complications. And this is Exhibit A, proving the point. It's the Le Mans Tourbillon Chronograph, 38 millimeters in rose gold. This watch features a black polished flying tourbillon with a mirror on its underside, so you can see it reflected from the bottom and luminous on its top side. The watch is fully loomed, with screw down crowns and chronograph pushers, 100 meters water resistant and automatic winding. Do you love the Alango Unzona Torbograph, but you wish it were automatic winding, a flying tourbillon, and able to get wet and wild? This is your watch. Now the timepiece features a compact 45 millimeter lug to lug dimension, and it's only 14 millimeters thick. Note that the timepiece features a remarkable array of silvers, violet pivot jewels, rose gold, lime green loom pits, pips and that little varnished red tip at the end of the chronograph second sand. Now caliber 23 F8 is gorgeous. This is about as good as it gets. Short of the likes of Langa and Patek Philippe, we're talking a freehand engraved winding rotor on a movement pivoting on 38 jewels that's an array of colors, silver, violet, and gold. The timepiece features big, broad, mirrored bevels and you can see them lighting up, glinting and gleaming under my lights. Without any loop, you can appreciate the finish on this movement, which features engine turning on bridges, unusual in high horology, as well as Cote de Genève across the winding bridge at center. It has both a black polished column wheel and a vertical clutch system, meaning it has both an excellent tactile aspect under the finger when you're actuating the chronograph, and you can engage the chronograph without stutter stepping, plus you can leave it engaged without hazard to the watch. That's all thanks to the vertical clutch. Now throwing this watch on the wrist, it is very comfortable. It's a traditionally sized men's dress complication, though with that swimmability. It becomes your rose gold sports watch. Easy to fit underneath the cuff and suitable for both male and female wrist sizes. This is a timepiece that represents the value both in terms of finish and complication that you get from pre-owned Blancpain dress watches. And while we're on a dress watch kick, let's talk about a watch that came out in 2019. Back in 2018, we saw the Vacheron 56 collection, a modern men's all-arounder based on the 1950s reference 6073. Well, the only obvious aspect of the 6073 are these little triangular shoulders at the edge of the case. But for 2019, the arrival of the blue dial, in my opinion, completed the watch. 40 millimeters in stainless steel with a complete calendar, the watch is convenient as you can easily date correspondence, emails, or memos, and the watch features hacking or stop seconds along with Geneva Hallmark finish so you get both refinement and precision. My favorite detail on the dial side isn't necessarily the blue dial, it is the polished frame for the moon phase. Evidence of the attention to detail, this watch is born of both the vintage reference 6073 and the great Vacheron calendar watches, usually Lecoult powered, of the 1940s and 50s. Turn it over and you've got a Vacheron manufacturer movement. Now there's been a lot of talk about the 56 self-winding not being in-house caliber and Geneva Hallmark. No such concerns here, as both the case and the movement are Poinçon de Genève, the five-position adjustment, and you can see there's a glorious hand-finished and bright-polished Maltese cross skeletonized and fitted atop the winding rotor. It beats away at 28.8. It is an ultra-thin automatic with ultra haute de gamme finish. You should buy a loop when you buy this watch, as you will not be disappointed by the quality of the execution, and you pay only for for the finishing quality, as this Vacheron is stainless steel, so there's no precious metal premium. On the wrist, it's a good all-around size. Like I said, 40 millimeters, it's neither overly large nor petite, and it has a nicely sculpted, almost cambered case band that allows it to wear well on a small wrist. The 56 complete calendar, about as good as it gets, and Vacheron sparing no expense, giving you a full deployment clasp here rather than the pin buckle you might have expected on a stainless steel model. There is no cost cutting and it is both handsomely made and double finished, media blasted and polished internally. Vacheron giving you the best of the best in a stainless steel case. Oh, and it is loomed by the way. 
Jumping back across from the big group brands to the independents, we have Romain Gautier, perhaps the most underrated independent in the business with the best finishing you're gonna find on serially produced watches. I put them co-equal with Grubel Forcey. The only way you're going to get better is if you go with the like of an artisanal brand, something that's basically a one-pop shop, the likes of your Voodelainen, the likes of your Hajime Aseoka or Philippe Dufour. For a company that makes just over 100 watches a year, Romain Gautier is the best in the business. Consider the dial side of this Insight Micro Rotor, a model launched in 2017. It's 39.5 millimeters in platinum. Now, when we get real close, you can see that there are, by my count, seven interior angles with mile-wide mirrored bevels, and that's just on the dial side. Gautier is not a watchmaker. He's an engineer. So there are innovative elements like the proprietary balance free sprung on a gorgeous full bridge. You'll You'll also know traditional craft art elements inspired by the heritage of the Valet du Jeu where the watches are made, including a grand faux enamel dial for the hours, minutes, and the seconds. Look at the proprietary handcrafted, skeletonized hands, and you realize the attention to detail here. You have a 22 karat micro rotor that energizes an 80 hour power reserve and the timepiece easy to wear at just over 48 millimeters from lug to lug on my wrist it's compact and comfortable and remember this is no expense spared finishing so the timepiece is both avant-garde in its dial layout and immaculately executed with no place for poor finish to hide the timepiece bears all everything of interest in the movement is on the dial side now when you turn it over you realize just how rare these watches are as this timepiece is Lucky 7, part of an edition of just 10 pieces. A frosted finish with mile-wide mirrored bevels. You could see that there are also recursive circle patterns on the wheels, as wheel fabrication is a specialty of the engineer Romain Gautier. You'll see the same style of wheel, for example, on Chanel timepieces, for which Gautier builds the wheels and the drivetrains. This timepiece is as good as any pocket watch from the 19th century, dare I say even better. Best in the business finish on a lovely satin finished surface that emulates the surfacing of those vintage 19th century Valet du Jeu pocket watches. Romain Gautier should be a celebrity in the watch space, but he's too laconic. He's too humble. He's not the kind of guy who wants to be the life of the party or toot his own horn. He's not going to tout himself. So you, as a connoisseur of independent horology, have to do it for him. Spread the word. This is as good as independent brands get. That said, Audemars Piguet is often described as a mainstream brand that thinks and acts like an independent. And part of the reason for that is that Audemars Piguet is the oldest Swiss manufacturer continuously owned and operated by the founding families. Now, today, Audemars Piguet, in the hands of the family since 1875, has a broad array of historical innovations, but my favorite came in 1991 with this watch, which took the late Renaissance wandering hours clock design and transposed it onto a wristwatch. This is the star wheel. Reference 25720, it's 36 millimeters in yellow gold, and it features a star wheel system whereby the star wheels and little pawl springs rotate a numeral on a sapphire disc that then aligns with a scale, a linear scale, for digital reading of the time. Four aligned with zero is four o'clock. Now you're looking at 406. Now you're looking at 410. Now you're looking at 430. It is a digital time display that inspired every watch of this type afterward from the likes of Erwerk, Moser, and Vacheron Constantin. This is the star wheel system, and you can see the numerals snapping into position as the time comes to pass. Now this model is hot rodded compared to the standard because this model features a banknote style scrolling or Art Nouveau motif across the base on a rose gold plinth. You could see that it is a handcrafted watch. It even features a handsome beveling and satination on the carriage for the star wheel mechanism. So this is hand engraving, a hand finished internal on the dial side, hand finished on the reverse side. 
Audemars Piguet by Jaeger Lecoultre. This is the caliber 889 ultra thin automatic. And you can see the use of black polished screws for Audemars Piguet rather than the blued screws used by JLC. Back in 1991, when this watch was created, Audemars Piguet owned 40% of Jaeger Lecoultre. So this movement was actually part of Audemars Piguet's group, making it all of one family and effectively a manufactured product. This is a timepiece that is so cool. It is the ultimate connoisseur's piece. It is my favorite Audemars Piguet. And as you can see, it wears traditionally. So if you don't have that huge honking wrist, this is a perfect opportunity to own something with real historical and artistic value, as well as one of the most innovative displays of our era. This spawned almost every Urwerk timepiece that followed. Bulgari. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. 200. As this is a 200 piece limited edition Bulgari Special, the Octo Finissimo Automatic in titanium, but with a blue lacquer dial featuring blue hands. The timepiece is 40 millimeters, 40.5 as I measure it, and only 5 millimeters thick. Bulgari claims 5.15, but I actually measure it at 5 on the nose. It's wonderful to see a mainstream brand under promising and over delivering. It wears like a second skin. It feels almost flush to the wrist, and the lug spacing is. 30 millimeters so you have perfect integration of the bracelet and the case and acclaimed 110 facets on the case itself now let's talk about the movement because it's the highlight of the watch as impressive as the thin profile it wouldn't happen without the manufactured caliber BVL-138, built in the manufacturer that used to be Gérald Genta and Daniel Roth in the Vallée du Jeu in Le Sentier, not far from the likes of Blancpain, Audemars Piguet, and Jaeger Lecoultre. This is a high horology movement over 36 millimeters in diameter and only 2.23 millimeters thick. Automatic winding with a platinum micro rotor and a 55 to 60 hour power reserve. This is heavy duty. A combination of manual finish and machine finish. It is ultra thin, ultra smart, custom built for this watch and beautifully made to the point that some elements are so obviously hand finished that you expect this watch to cost twice as much as it does. Special to begin with, this 200 piece limited edition with the blue accents is very much of our time and it is my favorite version of the watch with the exception of the green accented Middle East limited editions. Again, the Octo Finissimo Automatic Ultimate low profile and one of the brands on the rise. Bulgari is separate from the other LVMH watch group companies, so it manages its own design, its own marketing, its own manufacture and engineering, making it separate from the likes of Tag, Hublot, and Zenith, which today feel like three different price points in one company. This is anything but. Patek Philippe, you had a rough 2019. Not because the watches didn't sell, but because they did. By late summer 2019, the Nautilus hype had become rancorous, deafening, aggravating, and inappropriate. These watches were commodified to the point that we didn't talk about them for what they are, which is beautiful, versatile, historically time-tested, from the pen of a great designer with the provenance of one of the all-time great brands, thin, water-resistant, hand-finished, and enduring, the 5711 deserves to be regarded as one of the most artistically crafted and versatile sports watches, not a thing to be bought and sold for endless profit by endless flippers. Prices have come down, so we can finally talk about this as a watch. 40 millimeters in stainless steel by only 8.5 millimeters thick, the 5711-010 is the consummate sports dress watch. Now, the Nautilus is anything but an aggressive sports timepiece along the lines of the Royal Oak Offshore, but whereas a standard offshore is 100 meters water resistant, this is 120. And whereas a standard offshore can't wear easily on a smaller wrist, even the 42s feel bigger. This is a timepiece that feels smaller than 40. Compact, flat, close coupled, and versatile enough to be your dress watch. If you're going to own just one watch, a 5711 is the way to go. A timepiece that is immaculately hand finished in the same fashion as the Royal Oak we saw earlier or the Overseas, you have the same phenomenon of a tape that is too gradual to feel in form of steps. You can see the taper in the curve, but it feels seamless as you run your fingers along the side of the links. There's a perfectly aligned bevel from the lug hood all the way to the flanks of the individual links. And then you have a case that is more complex in its construction with more facets and features, satinations and polished features, facets 
and faces than you would find on an Aquanaut. It is not just seniority that's responsible for the higher price of the Nautilus, it is quite literally a more expensive watch to make. Now the timepiece, as launched in 2006, the 5711, features a gradient blue dial that fades from silver blue at center to navy blue almost black at its edge. And the caliber 324 automatic seen through the case back has been updated over the years with six position adjustment, ceramic rotor bearings, and an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. It's beautifully made. So unlike that solid case back Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Chronograph, Patek is proud to show you a movement made under its own roof. While the caliber in the Audemars Piguet is good, this is great. Patek Philippe giving you a high standard of finish even on what is considered by its standards to be something of an entry-level watch. The Nautilus is forever. The hype will fade, but the appeal is eternal. That said, I kind of dig the 5196P. 37 millimeters in platinum, this model launched back at Basel World 2004. Based on the historic Calatrava 565 and the original 1932 reference 96, this is a timepiece that is the heart and soul of Patek Philippe. That reference 96 was the first Patek model with a reference number penned by one of the Sterns themselves, the controlling family of Patek Philippe in their earliest days of control of the manufacturer. The Calatrava name didn't arrive until collectors bestowed it in the 1980s, but the basic design laid down by the 96 endures here. Breguet style numerals in white gold, leaf style hands, small seconds and integrated lugs that were very much of a form follows function mentality back in 1932. 37 millimeters by only 8.1 millimeters thick, this timepiece wears easily. The consummate dress watch, it's neither too big nor too small and it wears super flat on the wrist with that signature of a Patek Platinum watch, the top Vesselton Brilliant Cut Diamond visible between the lugs at 6 o'clock. It's a secret between you and your watch. Now of course I mentioned this is inspired by a vintage Calatrava reference 565 which frequently used this dial design, albeit not to this level of finish. You have a matte or frosted finish outboard with drilled dimples for the minutes. You have a concentric circular brushing underneath the applique brigade numerals, and then you have a frosted or opaline center with concentric circular guilloche or azurage on the sub-register and a brilliantly polished chapter ring for the inner dial. This watch is powered by a Geneva Hallmark Caliber 215 manual wind inside, but to keep things slim, Patek goes with a solid case back. Make no mistake, it's as beautiful on the inside as it is on the outside. And if you're going to own just one manual wind Patek dress watch, let it be this, the direct descendant of the original Reference 96. But you knew I wasn't going to end with a time-only manual wind dress watch. Launched in 2013 and only made in 13, 14, 15, and 16, there are dozens, not hundreds, of the Patek Philippe 5216P in this world. 39.5 millimeters by only 12.5 millimeters thick, this timepiece gives you the works. A King Kong complication from a company known for them. It's a minute repeater, a tourbillon, a perpetual calendar, a moon phase, and a retrograde date. All of that I should mention, in a timepiece that wears fairly easily, even on a small wrist, this is anything but the size for its own sake, Grubel Forsey philosophy. This watch is compact, this watch is discreet, chaste, tasteful, all of that, and you get the best of Patek Philippe. Let's turn it over and take a look. Caliber RTO 27 PSQI, and as you can see, it features everything that is good and great about Patek manual finish. A black polished full bridge for a black polished tourbillon carriage. The bridge itself has eight interior angles, black polished strikers for the minute repeater, and a third wheel that takes 10 hours to manually finish made out of 14 karat gold. You can see it's everything from beveling to sharp angles to a wonderful organic form that you might compare to the arms of an octopus. This movement has it all. Manual wine with a 48 hour power reserve. The highlight is by far the fact that the watch can speak for itself. By virtue of its minute repeater, let's fire it up and hear what this model has to say. I'll do my best to set it to 1259. It can sometimes be difficult to hit the 59 on the nose, but I'm going to try to get it for you guys at home. Let's hear what this watch sings its song.
And when this watch sings its song, it is always a command performance. I'm on my feet with applause. Guys, thank you so much. Everything on the show is for sale. Names, reference numbers, and prices are in the description below. To purchase a watch or inquire about any of the timepieces you see here, reach out to me directly. Tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.